overall effort focus was better. Uh, the biggest takeaway was our offense. And we just got stagnant. And I think a lot of that was the switching. It's, it's given us problems before. And we kind of settle and fall into that, you know, playing a lot of one-on-one -on -one ISO ball. And it, it's, it's tough. Um, still got decent looks out of it at times, but they didn't fall. So it just kind of compounds itself and, and takes on a snowball effect. Um, I think you kind of lose a little bit of our identity on that end of the floor. I feel like you might have just answered that, but are you okay with jacking up 39 threes when you guys are shooting at that rate? The, the type of threes that we took? No. Yeah. 39 in general, I don't mind, as long as it's the correct ones. You know, I thought we got away from uh, what we're trying to do a little bit. When the ball sticks like it did tonight, why does it keep sticking? I can understand the one question. Sessions, but honestly, it's a good question. Um, it's something we've talked about because we've seen it before and we're going to see it again. Uh, at times, we've handled it correctly. Uh, so it's just a challenge of, you know, being disciplined to, to try to do the right thing. And that, that doesn't mean I want guys not to be aggressive. But, you know, if it's one or two possessions and things haven't gone right, then let's get back to what we're trying to do. Um, the spacing, the ball movement, you know, even the body movement it just creates angles and creates enough room that if you do have an ISO, um, gives the guy a chance to play. First half, we guarded ourselves. Yeah. So uh, really put ourselves in a, in a bind. If somebody's missed two or three shots in a row, is screen away just kind of, should that be a default after you've missed two or three in a row? It depends on what kind of misses and what kind of shots they were. I mean, if they're rhythm shots and they're generated off of, you know, good opportunities, then no, it's just missed them. Mm -hmm. But if it's those those situations where, you know, we're forcing plays or we're playing a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, it's not going well, yeah. At times, you we got to do something different. And, you know, that's on me too. I got I to gotta help them. I can't just say, hey, you guys figure it out. Um, I got to help them and they got to help themselves. It looked like um, Neto left with a holding a shoulder or something, you know, a little bit of pain. Do you have any idea what that is? Not yet. A guy like Mills, you know what he's going to do, right? You know how he's going to play, I should say. Um, is, there, is there frustration when you know that this is what he's designed, this is what they brought him here to do, and he's able to do it right away? Uh, Stone and sure, but that's okay. Um, you know, we, we go through personnel, we go through game plan. You're not going to take everything away, but obviously you want to take something away. You can't let a guy continually play to his strength. Um, and tonight we allowed it. Um, you know, it's Kevin Durant, James Harden, they're, <laughs> they're elite and, and, and for a reason. Um, they made some tough shots over solid defense, which I can live with. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, sometimes those other plays where we're not getting back in transition. Guys are running past us for layups. Uh, we don't box out, give a free run to the rim. Uh, you know, those type plays, I think, are the ones that, you know, just take those out, and it, it changes the game. We're not used to kind of seeing Brad not be able to, I guess, kind of re-maneuver and cut through the lane when, he, when his jumper isn't working. Was it their size just looked like when he was running into those bodies, he can't kind of move it out like he used to? His size, but it's also the off-body uh, movement, off-ball movement, rather, where, you know, we're just kind of stacked on top of each other where we have to continue to space the floor correctly, give a guy like Brad an opportunity to play a little bit of room. Um, we're bringing another body to it. And it's hard to get anything off the bounce if you you got two and three guys kind of just sitting there. Chase. Um, first of all, do you know if Howell is headed for an MRI or x-ray or anything like that? I'm sure he's going to get evaluated. I'm not ex not exactly sure to what extent. And what do you think about how Brad looked physically just coming back from the injury? He looks fine. I mean, obviously, he's, he didn't have his legs tonight. A lot of his short uh, shots were short. Um, but those are makeable shots for him. You know, he's going to make his, his share of those. So I'm not overreacting to tough shooting night. Um, he had one or two of those in the preseason. Um, but he, you know, he's a big-time scorer. And he, once he finds his rhythm, uh, he's going to be really good. And what do you think about just the bench production, you know, pa the way Patty Mills went off and then how you guys didn't really get a, a huge bump from the bench like you had in the first two games? It, you know, it's going to happen some nights, you know, and, you know, I still think our depth overall uh, will win most battles. But, you know, that's, that's life in NBA. You, know, you can argue, well, they made shots and we didn't, but we didn't put ourselves in a good position to, to, to do that tonight. So... Uh, I tip my hat to them. They played well. Um, they defended us well. And, 
you know, our second half defense was was slightly better. But we, uh, I think we, we played one side of the ball and, and let the other side go. Neil. Hey, Coach, like you said, obviously, you know, Durant and Harden will give teams fits. It seemed that in a first quarter timeout, Spencer, you were, you know, trying to get on the same page. What is that conversation like and how do you go about, you know, just making sure everybody's always on the same page? Well, it's just not me and Spencer. It's all, you know, all five guys on the floor. Um, you know, there was a call made um, and two guys were understood what that call was and, and three others didn't. Um, so my point to him was, you know, collectively, we're not on the same page. So it wasn't necessarily directed to him, but it's more the group that uh, we, when the more possessions that we have where we're not organized, the less effective uh, we're going to be offensively. So possessions that usually start bad in bad. And, you know, at that, at that point, we had a number of those type possessions. And uh, I felt that I had to at least stop it, you know, at least stop the bleeding and get our guys on the right track. Last question to Wayne. Hey, Coach. Uh, Isaiah Todd got in towards the end of the game. What did you see from him uh, in his game towards uh, at the end? I like his aggressiveness. And, you know, I think, he, you know, he, he can play multiple positions. Um, we had him out there at the five a little bit. And, you know, within our offense, I think gives him the flexibility to handle, put it down. Um, but once, you know, he gets more comfortable, I think he'll, he'll settle in. Uh, he's a shot maker. And, you know, I think he can stretch defenses, you know, as a small five, that's going to present some problems. First place, I'd like to say that Jesus Christ. Um, before that, we got to, I think our approach to the game has to be better. I think uh, we kind of have the mindset that we could just kind of flip on a light switch and uh, come on win. You know, what this is a team that's kind of struggling. You know, they lost one last night. That they felt like they probably shouldn't have lost, and then they came out with a different mentality. So I would say their approach to the game was a little bit uh, more aggressive than ours. Um, and then obviously, like you said, we uh, the ball definitely stuck a lot. I mean, we didn't, especially on the left side of the floor, was, uh, for whatever reason. Um, but we gotta gotta be better at uh, moving bodies, moving the ball, um, cutting harder, setting better screens, um, and definitely starting with me. I gotta be better all around. So. Uh, but as a unit, we we definitely the ball stuck a little bit too much for sure. Did it come down to they hit first tonight? Yeah, but it's crazy. You look at the game; they didn't kill us with anything. Like their three balls hurt yeah. us. Patty made some some tough threes, but it wasn't like we were kind of beating ourselves in a lot of things, especially like our offensive space and turnovers. I think I had like four or five turnovers, um, and just our ability to make it tough on Kevin. I think I think early in the in the first half, he got a lot of comfortable shots. Um, you know, we've got to be better at making it difficult for him. But um, offensively, our spacing was bad, a lot of turnovers. So we were kind of beating ourselves for a little bit. Granted, we respect them, but I think we could have controlled a lot of that stuff that could have kept us in the game a little bit better than what it was. Well, the guy like Kevin, I mean, he's going to rise up with the season. You guys have to put it on there in the floor. But, I mean, the first time gets three layups in the first five minutes of transition, not running anything. And then Patty, you know, he's when he comes in and he does it. Are those the ones that killed more so than 100%. 100%. Uh, it's crazy because Coach said earlier, we got to keep their role players out of the game. You know, uh, Patty, Joe, uh, Bruce, Bembry, all those guys, you know, who come in and have different impacts on the game. You know, Patty came in was electric. You know, he just did his job. He didn't do anything out of character, didn't do anything spectacular. He just came out and shot the ball with confidence. You know, and uh, we just got to be better with that. And Bruce, we know he's, I always say he's one of the best. He's the best five in the league. You know, he sets screens, he rolls, he finishes, he's fine to weak side. Um, he's a true role player. You know, he accepts what they have him do. And uh, like you said, he got out in transition, got a lot of lays. Uh, was able to get behind the defense, get some offensive boards too. So uh, it's safe to say they hit us. They hit us a lot more than what we did. Yeah. What does it take to kind of course correct when maybe you guys don't start with the right energy or focus? Like, can can you kind of change that at halftime or at the end of the quarter or something? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is not panic. We don't panic. Uh, it's one game. It's one game. And uh, we realize that was my message after the game. We can't just flip on a light switch. And that's what we tried to do. We tried to turn it up in the second half. And, you know, we would get stops, went on a good run, almost got it down to 10. Uh, but if we did that throughout the first half, you know, the game would have been a lot closer. We'd have been more engaged. So uh, it's just a matter of just being locked in, staying locked in, uh, you know, taking a more serious approach to every single night, knowing that you get you, we, we're not good enough to just come out here and say, okay, we're just going to, we're ready to turn it up. 
we're not developed like that. So we got to make sure as a team, we're locked into the personnel, to film, to, you know, knowing what guys want to do, knowing their plays, and, and we got to go out and execute better than what we do. Did you feel physically moving around with the hips? I feel good. I feel really good. Uh, there's no limitations. Um, I didn't get hit on it, thank God. Uh, so I'm good. Good, thank you. Chase. Uh, yes, Brad. Um, Wes said that he he noticed you guys so far have had a little bit of trouble with switch defense. Um, what's your perspective on that? What do you think you guys need to do, uh, I guess, moving forward? Our communication has to be better. Um, obviously, schematic-wise, there's some things we can change and um, kind of be on the same page about, but uh, we still have to talk and communicate, you know. Um, regardless of what our coverage is, we still have to go out and do it with force and energy. You know, we still didn't, even if we we're doing it right. We still weren't doing it aggressive enough, you know, so um, we just have to be better. I mean, regardless of what our scheme is, it's switching, it's downing, it's, you know, sitting in the middle, whatever it is, we have to do it aggressively and, uh, and keep the teams from scoring. So honestly, it doesn't matter if it's switching or what defense is, we got to be better at it. And obviously uh, one game, you can only evaluate so much from it, but um, just, you know, playing one of the top teams in the league after so much change on this roster in the offseason, just kind of what, 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 what do you take away from this? Uh, I like it. I mean, we 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 definitely compete. We're not a we're not a soft team. We we go out and compete, and uh, obviously we have to be better and we have to be more consistent, and because that's what good teams do, and that's who good teams are. You know, especially on the road, you got to win on the road and protect your house. Um, granted, we started off two and zero, and we came in tonight kind of a little bit big headed, and that's what we needed. You know, it kind of kicked us in the ass, and now we get to go back and be humble about it. And now we face a Boston team that's similar to this team uh, that we just faced. You know, they were struggling early on and they just won one. So now they they might have their juices back. But, you know, regardless, we have to control what we control. Um, you know, no matter who we're playing, we have to be better in all aspects of the game. And it, it seems like depth and, you know, scoring depth is a strength for you guys. We've seen that through two games. Um, is there anything that needs to be done or can be done to make sure that that actually plays out in a game or like anything that can be done within a game just to make sure that that actually I think it just goes back to the point earlier. I think we're able to ask just, you know, the ball sticking. We have to move the ball. We have a lot of scores, um, you know, guys who can shoot the ball. We have to be able to get them more acclimated. Like, we got to get Bertan some shots. You know, we got to get Pope some shots. These are our knockdown shooters. Um, you know, we got to be able to get these guys shots. And and that's up to us guards, you know, me, Spence, and, and Awu, and Aaron, and all of us to be able to be better at creating, putting our guys in better positions, getting in the paint and finding those kickouts. Uh, you know, so because we don't depend on them to make plays and create off the dribble or tell them to go one-on-one. -on -one. So we have to be, that's a great question, Chase. We gotta be a lot better at, at that, at that for sure. Last question, Tamil. Hey Brad, um, you didn't have any free throw attempts tonight, which is past three seasons. That's only happened twice to you in two games. Is that, some, is that something where you feel like you just weren't getting calls or you might have been settling a little bit, not driving enough? Uh, a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Uh, I was actually happy with the threes I took. I wasn't, I looked in the box score, I didn't realize I took damn near 15. I was like, oh, okay, maybe you might, you might have been settling for sure. But uh, but I liked it. I liked, I liked the looks, you know. Uh, I was definitely confident in them and uh, they definitely felt good. And you guys know me, I'll be, I'll be good. I'll be, I'll bounce back. Uh, but I definitely have to be better for my team in, in all aspects. And I think me attacking the basket would have been a little bit better. And I could have got to the line and put us in a bonus or created from opportunities for other teammates, uh, too. So, I mean, that's a good question, Neil. I mean, we got to, I got to make shots. Uh, but I am happy I, I took that many. I, I don't think I've ever taken that many from a confidence standpoint, just being out there, just believing in my three. Uh, but definitely, I liked how I felt. Like, I liked the shots I got. Uh, I like the shots we got as a team. Obviously, I didn't like the ball sticking, and I was included in that. So we got to be better. We got to be better for sure. Brad, I thought that you guys kind of flubbed up and the approach to the game tonight, where the mental focus was. Do you agree with that? Oh, uh, yeah. No, I mean, um, obviously, we didn't, we didn't start great. Uh, what can you do to kind of, when there is that lack of focus, what can you do to kind of course correct within a quarter? Is there anything? Um, probably just, uh, you know, communication. Uh, trying to refocus, get back to our principles, things like that, um, so that we don't let, you know, it snowball a little bit. 
do what he does. And it's not a lot that anybody can do about that. But how much did Bruce and Patty and those guys hurt each other? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. That's uh, that's what you look to stop. You, you know, whenever somebody has a volume of possessions, you don't stop them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, for uh, anybody. I mean, Brad, for example, right? He had close to 20, right? Like, so he wasn't stopped. You know what I'm saying? But you can't have Patty Mills come off the bench and give you, and give you 20. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's really the game right there. You know what I mean? If Patty Mills didn't have like a, a crazy first half and we make our run in the second half, we're tying the game up, you know? And uh, obviously we have to do much better offensively, um, but we only had, they had what, 104, right? So the defense in general wasn't like horrendous, right? Um, me and Brad have to produce better offense for our team and then obviously collectively as well. When you say it's up to you guys to produce that, is that kind of where the communication comes in just because the spacing was, seemed a little off? Or what, is, what can you do, I guess? Um, no, I mean, that, that just comes from saying like primary and secondary playmakers. That's that's really all I meant by that. There was nothing crazy. I mean, obviously, as a unit, we didn't shoot the ball well. As a unit, our spacing could have been better, like, you know, team-wise all the way around. But, um, yeah, just just as our job, being the backcourt, being the guards, being the primary and secondary playmaker, like, you know, we're supposed to do better in that in that respect. How much does their length kind of take away, not just driving length, but maybe aggressiveness to get to the best? Because we just know we get two seven footers standing back to it. Well, so again, I mean, I think that goes back to like just us putting ourselves in better positions. Um, you know, I, Britain's obviously a, a phenomenal team. They're going to be a championship contender again, of course. Um, they're not necessarily like you know, a defensive juggernaut, though. You know what I mean? So we, we have to do better um, just all around. Like I said, they only had 104, like, but we scored 80, what, 88, 90, something like that. Yeah. What can you guys do to get KCP more involved? Um, just, just knowing good shots for our, our team, right? And so if we need to get him off more pin downs and, and, and find him in space, then uh, that's what we, we got to do. Chase. Hey Spencer, uh, what did you notice about their approach to to guarding you individually, and were you at all surprised that Kevin Durant started on you at the beginning of the game? Um, not really, given the lineup that they were uh, bringing out there. Um, I mean, I think just like everybody else right now, they're going to try not to foul, um, not to put people at the line, and you know, I mean, I would say that was the the main way uh, they tried to try to guard me. And uh, it's very early, only three games, but um, you're off to a really good start shooting three. And I I'm just wondering, you know, going through the, the rehab that you did, it was a leg injury. Did you spend a, a lot of time shooting early on? And do you think it's maybe an area game that you could come out of it and improve? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously hurt my knee. So, you know, spent a lot of time shooting and, you know, hopefully uh, that improvement continues throughout the season. Um, it's a long season. So I'm not going to, you know, declare myself uh, Kyle Corver or Joe Harris, but, you know, uh, I, I want to definitely be improved in that area. Michael. Hey, Spencer, I'm on uh, Zoom, man. It's good to see you. Uh, yeah, you. Just wanted to ask you, obviously, they played the, the tribute for you, and I know you've always touched on how much you enjoyed your time here, but what did it mean for you to, if you got a chance at all, to look up and see the tribute and just being back in Barclays just uh, on the different side of the tunnel for you? Um, it's crazy, you know, this was, this was home for like five years. So, you know, it was, it was a little bit different for sure. Um, still got a lot of friends and family here. Uh, Jersey swap with Joe after the game was my guy. Uh, I only caught a piece of the tribute. So hopefully they got it on social media or something so I can watch it. Um, but no, overall it's, it's all love. You know what I mean? I, I appreciate my time here and, and it was, a, it was a great place for me. Best of luck, brother. Thank you. Last question to Neil. Spencer, Brad kind of described it as, you know, you can't have the mindset that, oh, you can just turn on a light switch. And that was his message to the team afterwards. I guess, and coach talked about, you know, discipline. How is it, you know, and during a grind of an 82 game season, you know, possible to just always bring it every night? And who does that responsibility fall on? Well, that's the thing. I mean, 
that that's the importance of principles and and the importance of kind of having like the hierarchy and all that other stuff because then it's not about like oh we have to be up here every night or something like that like we do what we do you know and, and that's the only way you can get through an 82 game season i think with any good team you see that you know what i'm saying they're, they're less so worried about being gimmicky or, or doing this or doing that like no they're going to come out they're going to play their way they're going to impose their will on the game and if they have to make adjustments then they do but the marker of a good team is being able to do that on a, on a consistent basis and um, never getting too high never getting too low um and you know that's coming from somebody who's been on really bad teams and, and really good ones you know, when, when you have that consistency of like who you are and you play to those strengths and you throw your ace card every night, like that's that's what you want to do. So, you know, if we know we need to get corner threes for Pope or we need to get Brad Isos or whatever it is, then that's like what we need to be looking to do every night. And, you know, in terms of who that falls on, I mean, the, there has to be a level of character and commitment in, in the locker room as a whole. But then obviously, um, like I said, me and, me and Brad are our other two uh, playmakers on um, the backcourt uh relatively elder statesman in terms of our roster being you know close to 30 um and he's a 30 point game scoring this league so you know first him second year me and then you know we gotta we could just gotta do our job